Why is it that some artists live in palatial estates while others with equal talent and passion struggle to make ends meet? It's a question that sends ripples through the world of art, opening a Pandora's box of systemic inequality. In the world of art, value is often associated with exclusivity. The more artists are excluded from opportunities, the more valuable the selected works become. It's a paradox, isn't it? The art world thrives on the narrative of the struggling artist, the one who is chosen from millions, thus amplifying the perceived worth of their work. However, this isn't a meritocracy. Often it's not about the quality of your work, but about who you know. The key to getting your work exhibited lies in networking. But with social mobility on the decline, fewer artists from working-class backgrounds find their work gracing the walls of galleries or being selected by arts organizations. This disparity is nothing short of criminal. A vast pool of talented artists remains unrewarded while a select few receive financial support. These chosen artists exist within a social network of fellow artists and an art education system, on a retainer for the millionaires to choose from. It's high time these gatekeepers of the art industry recognized their obligation and compensated all artists fairly. So how can artists regain control? The first step is to challenge the notion that only art that sells has value. If this were true, then only the art that wealthy galleries peddle and millionaires collect would have value. But this is far from the truth. The value of art is not defined by its price tag, but by the conversations it sparks, the emotions it stirs, and the change it inspires. Art is not about making money, it's about the process, the dialogue, the human connection. Art about money caters to the millionaires. If you're not one of them, don't let them dictate your worth. Artists have always been at the forefront of societal change, a role often overlooked by the art world. It's essential to value each other and each other's art, to recognize its social utility. Perfectionism in this context becomes a form of fascism, undermining the inherent value of art. Art exists and holds value, whether or not someone buys it. Its true value lies in communication, in its ability to bring people together. It's not about the isolated display on the internet, but about real-world interactions, exhibitions, art fairs, community projects. In conclusion, the systemic inequality in the arts is a complex issue, rooted in exclusivity, networking, and a distorted perception of value. It's high time for a shift in perspective to recognize all artists' contributions and challenge the notion that only art that sells has value. Art is a social activity with inherent value, and it's time it was treated as such.